to you all from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I like talking about the kingdom of God. I really like talking about finding the kingdom of God in children. The way Jesus tells us, if you want to receive the kingdom of God, you better receive it as a little child. Not by acting like a little child, but by actually welcoming a little child who carries the kingdom of God in his or her life. That is the kind of thing that makes me happy. Because how can we live with more love than Jesus gives us when he tells us to go in the world finding the kingdom of God in the children? even the children that get pushed away into the side. That makes me happy. I could talk to you all day about the joy of the kingdom of God in little children. But I'm not going to talk to you happy today. The fact of the matter is, I'm just going to kind of let my emotions fly, and pretty quickly you're going to see me get pretty upset. Because one of the things that does not see the kingdom of God in little children is when we take the scripture, God's love letter to the people of earth, and we use it to hurt one another. There is no celebration of the kingdom of God when we go to the Bible and look for ways to rip each other apart and throw each other down, especially when we start attacking each other's families. And the gospel lesson we have today before we get to those blessed little children, is a lesson that has been used to hurt God's people who already hurt enough. We are a people who understand that life isn't perfect, and life isn't fair, and love, as much as we give it our best intentions, isn't always forever. We're people who gather here today, and I would venture to imagine that every last one of us is a child of, a brother or sister of, a parent of, or someone who has experienced divorce in their own lives. And the old story goes like this. Some preacher stands up with the Bible and says, Jesus said, that there is to be no divorce. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. The man leaves his family and is joined to his wife, and the two become one flesh. And if your life hasn't matched that, or if the lives of your loved ones and neighbors haven't matched that, and heaven forbid you went into a marriage full of hope and promise, but it dissolved out of your fingers. Heaven forbid you found someone else who loved you, and someone else where you could give your love away. Adulterers. Sinners. I get angry because that's how we use this text. To rip apart people's lives and to turn God's children who already have experienced enough hurt into those who carry shame and guilt and hurt all the more. Who are thrown into a place of then having to justify themselves as to why their lives don't meet the ideals that Jesus lifts up. Justifying ourselves is never the point of the gospel. I get angry because we use the scripture against one another. I get angry because the Pharisees don't come to Jesus asking him an honest question. Nobody ever walked up to the Lord and said, Jesus, out of the wisdom you embody, out of the love of your heart, out of the insight into God's eternity that you share, teach me how to live as a husband or a wife. Instead, the Pharisees come with a test. 
Their goal is not to hear Jesus speak a word of mercy. Their goal is to catch him in a trap so they can execute him. And the basis of this teaching that we use against each other still today in the church is Pharisees who want Jesus to be proven wrong. And so they come to him to catch him and they said, Lord, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? The fact of the matter is that God had already settled the question. Jesus asks the Pharisees, what did Moses command you? And he knows full well that what Moses commanded wasn't from Moses' own personal genius. It was from what the Lord gave him to show the people how to live. The Pharisees and Jesus and Moses and the people are already in full agreement that our human lives are imperfect. That there is sometimes something that happens to us in our most intimate relationships. That even within a marriage there are times when our hearts are hardened in ways that we cannot control and for reasons that only are known to the people in that relationship a marriage falls apart jesus and the pharisees already know that god's law includes the grace We've worshipped God the way we want God to exist. 
rather than the way God confronts us in the life of Jesus. The Pharisees put Jesus to the test because he doesn't match the small image of God they carry in their minds. And these will be the very same people who believe they are defending Almighty God when they nail God to the cross to kill him. Jesus in the Gospel is not talking about our marriages with each other. He's talking about our marriage with our Lord. And he leaves us with knowing God has made these promises. God, in Jesus Christ, left the power of his Father to come walk with us, to be joined with us, that he might be in us and we might be in him, that he might abide with us forever. Jesus Christ leaves the glory of his Father's house so that we might be one flesh. And he prays that we may be one as God is one. And he begs what God is joining together. Let no one tear apart. And he promises to his disciples that truth is truth and reality is reality. That if we divorce the spouse who loves us so much and chase after someone else, we break faith. God would break faith if God chose somebody else. If God stopped loving us mere humans and went to Mars or some other planet and raised up some new people, if God turned to a different creation than the one that God promised to save. God would be cheating on us. Thanks be to God for one who is faithful. But likewise, if we give up on the God who loves us to chase after ones who make our lives easier or more comfortable, we're turning against our Lord becoming exactly what John called us from the waters of baptism. Oh, you adulterous generation, who warned you to be in the wrath to come. But thanks be to God Almighty, who will not give up on me, adulterer though I am in my faith and my walk with my Glory be to God for the faith shown in the marriage Christ has with us. That though we are people of a wandering eye, and though we are people who would put our Lord to the test, though we are people who would take the scripture and use it against one another in order to free ourselves from having to be the ones it's truly about, glory be to God who is faithful and kind restores to us the relationship where we can stand say, honey, I'm home. Glory be to God who loves us so much. They came to put Jesus to the test in order that they might trap him and we might fall apart, shooting each other to the ground along the way. Glory be to Christ for passing the test, that we might have life and have it abundantly, and continue walking by grace.